I worked a little bit more last week after um, after the demonstration, just starting to block in basic highlights and shadows, right? And starting to refine deer. Just don't hurt yourself. Um, starting to refine edges, right? Starting to find the actual shapes of individual rocks. Um, worrying just about very general lighting, right? So it's still pretty vague, right? It's still kind of in that formative stage. I don't have any of the individual rocks in here. I've kind of played with a little bit of texture in the mountain, but it's not really representative of what I see. It's just more kind of probing, right? So at this point, I'm not, I, you know, even up to the very end, I'm not being very, you know, planned about how I'm approaching this painting at all. But what I wanted to talk about today um, are the clouds, and then after I'm done with the clouds, I'm going to continue painting for a little while uh, to try to develop the, the rest of the painting for a little bit. But those of you that don't want to stick around, obviously, can, you can go get started. But the clouds um, are, are a little bit trickier than some of the other parts. First, you want to look at the clouds, right? So sometimes we get into the habit of thinking to myself, like, I know how to paint clouds, right? But you don't know how to paint clouds because there's no such thing as how to paint clouds, right? No. No. I'm, I'm teaching a drawing class right now up on the main campus, so I've been going through kind of the beginnings of drawing and, uh, and talking a lot about like intellectual versus perceptual under, uh, like uh, drawing. So we have a tendency to draw on an intellectual side a lot of times when we're making art because it's a dominant you know, force in our brain. The side that makes meaning, that creates language, that you know, creates models and stuff like that. And so we end up with a cloud, right? Because our brain says, I know what a cloud is, that's what a cloud is, and so we paint it, right? Rather than letting our eyes drive what we, you know, our perception, right? The, the information that's coming in here drive what we're doing on the canvas. So, uh, so do that. I mean, take the time to look at what you've got. Um, look at clouds from both sides now. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a multi-brain, focused, able, um, then by all means, but go that way. So, I really have no clouds at all. <laughs> so look at the clouds. Um, fuzzy edges, right? Which is kind of what the, a hard thing to do in acrylic is, right? Fuzzy edges. Um, it's, these edges are fuzzier than this edge right there, right? Um, a lot of times in clouds, the top edge is fuzzier than the bottom edge. So I mean, uh, it's worth it's worth noting these things, right? Um, that's not always the case, though. So fuzzy edges, and then really, I've got uh, I can get away at least in the beginning with just mixing two colors, right? I've got this white, that's the highlight color. And then I've got this kind of dark, what color is that? So in this case, uh, like often, it's easier to talk about it in terms of temperature, right? Because it is neutral. It's, it's very close to gray, but it's a little on the cool side. It's cool. It's a cool neutral, right? It's kind of a medium value. It's not as dark as uh, you know, our black is here. It's, it's at kind of you know, right in the middle kind of a five. So we got to mix, let's mix that up real quick uh, and then we should be good to go. And I've got my sky colors kind of ready on the sides to, to help me out if I need to, to fuzz these edges. Um, okay, so that gray, how would I do that? Any ideas? Black, gray right down your what? Gray down my blue so I could take what I've already got and just gray that down. Blue brown. Scott, that is way too easy. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of that. How do I gray that down? Black. Value-wise, it's, it's too dark, so I need to lighten it up. If I add white, that's going to gray it down, right? Because white's a neutral. Notice I'm not taking my thalo. I'm taking the, the ultramarine, because the thalo is not going to lose its saturation, and I want it to in this case. OK, so uh, value-wise, I'm getting pretty close, right? It might be a little bit too. It's too light. It's too white and too bright. It's, it's too bright and too light. 
but I want it to be too light because it's going to darken up as it dries, right? Because this is acrylic. So it's also too bright, which is saturation. I need it to be more neutral. How do I do that? Yes. And in this case, I'm going to add a neutral orange, which is burnt sand. Oh, is that considered an orange? Yeah. Oh. Browns, browns Brown's all orange. kind of fall under the orange-red side of the, the color wheel. Oh. Right, so brown is a complement to blue. I've gone too far, maybe. Too reddish. Too red. Too far. So let's try, instead of mixing in this whole pile, I've already got some of that on my palette knife. I'm gonna pull it over over here. I see, I see a lot of you just, you mix into one pile over and over again and you just get this Mark. massive pile of the wrong color, right? <laughs> so pull it off to the side and that still looks, so that's actually getting closer, right? Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. A little closer, What what's still wrong with it? Probably still too saturated, right? Yeah. But I'm actually okay with that color. I like, I'm gonna stop there. Um, I like that it's a little bit more saturated. And actually, I need more than that. Quite a bit more than that, so. I apologize, let me try to cook up a little bit more of that. Um, I'm going to dump that in there. <laughs> now he's dumping it all in a pot. <laughs> <laughs> you did the same as we do. <laughs> Don't do this. That's, that's often what I find myself saying. Don't do what I'm doing. Is your class here on Monday? Is there class, what? Monday? I have a Monday class. Uh -huh. It's uh, mixed media. Yeah, but there's She's class this Monday. Oh, this Monday. Oh, oh because there's Rosh Hashanah? Yeah. yeah. Am, am I getting that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, there sorry. is. Yes, it's not counted as a holiday with the colleges. But if a student doesn't choose to show up, it's not penalized. We will not give you a poor grade that day. <laughs> and I will hold your sticker for the following week. So <laughs> appreciate that. Sorry, that, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so not exactly the right color, but I'm going to call it good. It's actually closer. Okay. I'm going to mix those two together so they're both the same. And then I'm going to put this off to the side and pull off the rest of this white. Ooh, I got some glycerin in there. Bad. That I won't work. You want to keep on mixing, hoping that it will go away, <laughs> but it will not. So I'm just going to put on some white off to the side there. So stop, even if you're in the middle of a demonstration, and clean your stuff off so you don't contaminate your uh, paint with that color. Um, okay, so I've got all my colors ready to go. I've got um, the dark part of the cloud. I've got my sky colors, and then I've got a white. Let's see what this white is compared. So for this, uh, for the lightest part of the cloud, that's actually not going to be too far off. So I'm okay with the white. I'm going to mix another version with just a little bit of yellow ochre in it to warm it up. Um, just a little bit, right? You're going to use white without mixing it with anything? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with... And let me remind you that this is not my uh, typical way of painting. So, trying to concentrate on what I'm doing and explain what I'm doing at the same time when I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> is, uh, is challenging. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dark color and like, uh, like usual with uh, oil and acrylic, I'm going to start with my dark and add light, right? Because it's easier to lighten things up than it is to darken things up. So I'm going to pull just a bunch of that um, and try to get 
generally some of those shapes cloud shapes in there you know very generally this kind of comes down and gets smaller as it recedes into space right this is our horizon line and clouds are following the same notions of vanishing point and horizon line and everything else just like a building would right we've got to follow that sense of linear perspective okay so something like that and even this this cloud over here that's primarily white I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger I'm gonna block that in because it does have a shadow and then over here I've got some puffs and I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller than they are in the picture okay now why that it while that is still wet hopefully gotta move I'm, I'm my, my brush is a little, um, it's got some of that darker color in there. So I'm going to take, make use of this, uh, you know, wet paint here and try to blend in. You know, everything with clouds is fairly soft. So I'm going to try to blend that a little bit. And I'm paying attention to, to edges here, you know, soft edges versus hard edges. Um, I might want to, I'm going to put this just as kind of a point of reference down here, kind of a light spot. Really, I would be choosing to paint clouds in oil paint. <laughs> in all honesty. Can you give us a couple of tips about using oil paints when you're doing that? I mean, um, well, oil paint, different it, than it is, it is it because dry. it doesn't dry as fast. Yeah, so I would be kind of just putting little daubs of color around if I was using oil paint, just to kind of experiment. Um, but you don't really have that luxury in, in acrylic. You kind of you have to be a little bit more deliberate in how you approach things. Okay, so it's still wet enough over here, but I also have my, and this is important, I've got my color over here that if it's not wet, I can always pick up that color again. And again, I want to paint wet into wet because I want smooth. Okay, so it's starting to kind of take shape, but I'm noticing that my edges are really hard, right? So, you go back to your blue. Maybe I have better brushes available to me. I'm going to try taking some of this blue. Got a weird shine on the canvas there. Yes, the. Okay, so I'm starting to get a kind of a blue that's closer to the sky. And I can try mixing that into the to the cloud. See that? Mm -hmm. Now I've got kind of a wet blue and it's not exactly the color of the sky, but that doesn't really matter cuz I am cuz it's kind of a transitionary uh, point, right? So now that I've got wet blue down, And this is pretty much just a tactic for acrylic because I'm trying to deal with the drawing time here. Now that I've got wet blue down on the page, I can take, you know, like a, a dry brush or brush that has less paint on it and kind of soften that, soften that edge up a little bit. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I don't know if you can see that from a distance, but now I've got a much softer transition from the cloud into the sky, right? That can only happen if you do wet into wet. It's not going to happen if you try to take dry paint 
and add water and thin it out and you get this kind of ghosty chalky little you know it doesn't work um, so you need to mix up your sky color when you're working on this so you have it available so you can get that kind of transition and soft edge if not you're going to end up with these kind of uh, more hard and like look like white dirt cloths right the hard edges you're not going to get the soft edges okay so um, that's kind of the biggest point here is is how to get those soft wispy edges right can I ask you something yes if you're doing oil can you if you have wet sky and wet clouds can you use a clean brush to kind of like try to mix the the color edges together that is what you would do you you'd uh, yeah kind of scumble along that edge and soften uh, kind of blend them in but that's that's much easier to do in uh, in oil okay so I'm starting to kind of punch the, the highlights a little bit in these clouds I know this is where I want my lightest point to be it's looking a little bit like I got a little bit too much of the yellow ochre in there and at the same time I'm using the cloud to kind of add more detail to this Hill. this mountain ridge here so there's kind of these crag right kind of this craggy thing um, and I'm going to kind of chop that down a little bit over here and take my shadow color perhaps and soften that bottom edge up a little bit. Well, I just Is there any way you could use matte medium to sort of soften any of the edges or you've got to come in with the sky color? Um, that is an excellent point uh, or, or, or question. Does anybody have any matte medium uh, that they have access to really quickly? Yes, I, I do. Let me get mine. Did not, I should. Excuse me, guys. You can do that, but you're going to get a different result. What is matte medium? Adding matte medium is doing what? It's thinning. So we're actually not, it, it, we're not really blending anything, right? When we add matte medium, we're doing a glaze. And anytime you glaze with white, you get that kind of chalky look. So you can do that. You, it's just not going to look as blended or soft as um, if you paint wet into wet. But you could use retarder. What's that? Retarder. You could put retarder. You can try using retarder. I just always feel compelled to give the disclaimer that retarder, in my experience, causes more pain. Why in what way? It's close this time. Is it it? It just, uh, I just always find that you end up getting little spots that are, are dry slower and spots that dry fast and then you drag your brush lightly across it and it'll pick up some paint and leave it and then you get these little chunky I don't know I just I always end up hitting myself more after using retarder uh, what about the open acrylics that are supposed to have a longer drying time um, I have not spent as much time with open acrylics and that that is the the Really cool. They're kind of selling line. Open, open golden, open acrylics. Yeah. They're a, it's a new, a relatively new line of acrylic paint set that um, Golden has come out with. Okay, so um, slower drying. Slower drying, yeah. Yeah, I, I and they have a medium. You can just buy in, like matte medium. It's an open, open, ac open acrylic uh, medium right. or whatever. Acrylic. I just picked up a couple of them on sale for the company to find them on sale because they're quite expensive. You should just try them out. I think I've got one in a yellow ochre mm -hmm. and a couple of colors in the open. They do slow down the drying, mm. but when you mix it with another, it's not going to make much difference, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... How am I doing? I can't see. <laughs> Close-ish, right? I'm still, I'm still having problems where, and this is, you know, just the, the way... What's that? Have a, lot of hard lines. a lot of hard edges. So that's what I would spend the next half an hour, an hour doing, is going back with my sky color and um, and my cloud cover color. And again, to get something like this, you don't need to be precise to begin with. Just put that that sky color in the general area so you have wet paint to blend into, right? 
You guys get what I'm saying? It's not, it, that sky color isn't there to, to be precise. It's just there to have paint to blend into. Um, and again, I guess this would be the same in, in oil too. Let me do a little bit more of that blending just to, to make the point here. You've got your star already. My what? Your star. Oh, thanks. I don't know what I want to leaving all these edges on the edges, is that to be able to stretch the canvas? Um, no, it's just because I like having that crisp edge when I'm done with the painting. Oh. When you I pull the tape off, it'll... Yeah, lots of extra Yeah, no, it's, well, there's a practical reason there too, is because I just don't want to do that big of a painting for a demo. Hmm. It just takes more time. And with that, you can wait. Okay, so... Um, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Just a second, though. I've got that wet paint, uh, the sky blue paint there. <coughs> and so now I can start blending in my shadow color into that wet paint. Um, yes, I, I'm working on that. Okay. So it's a, in this case, it's. Grab a little bit more of that blue. These are really time consuming clouds. Mm. I'm sorry. This will be the last. Uh, I'll, I'll stop it there. Anyway, you can see that now I've got a much more, uh, you know, a much softer edge. And that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. Wet into wet, right? That's the only way you're going to get that. Um, for those that are interested, if you're not interested, you can go ahead and get started. Uh, I, do. I, I want to show you what it looks like if we try using matte medium as our... Yeah, okay, it's an old container, but it works well. Okay, so, so the idea is rather than using my sky blue to get that wet into wet, I'm going to use matte medium, right, as, as kind of a substitute. So I'm going to put the matte medium here kind of in that general area. And then I'll blend my uh, cloud into the matte medium. And this is an acceptable way to go about it. Just realize that you're going to get a different result. It's not going to look the same, right? I think a lot of us uh, kind of feel like it's the same thing, but it's the difference between mixed color and glazed color, right? It's always different, right? Okay. So I've got that matte medium down there, the wet paint. And sometimes it works well. So I, you know, it's worth kind of exploring this. And I just put some uh, my shadow color down. I'm going to take some paint off my brush. And now um, just run my brush along that matte medium edge right there. And it's actually working all right. Surprise, 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 surprise. <laughs> Oh. What about when it dries? Right, when it dries, uh, and and you might want to come up uh, when this does dry and take a look at, at it, like at the difference between this and that, because you'll notice they're different colors, right? And again, you're gonna you're gonna tend to get kind of a milky, transparent look, kind of a ghosty look when you when you um, blend in the matte medium because it's a glaze instead of a wet to wet mixture. Okay. Um, so it actually worked all right. I got a soft edge right there. Sometimes, you know, in some applications, this, you want, maybe in this case, the ghosty edge is okay, because they're clouds. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk about today is clouds. I'm still really general, and right? And I'm not being very specific about, about uh, clumps uh, and fluffs and stuff like that. As I develop the clouds more, I'll get more and more detailed, but you gotta get that underlying, Kind of structure the clouds right. All right.